Hello, my friends all over the world, wherever you are. William Poloniak here again at Whole Health Foundation. And today I'm making a very simple juice with collard greens, French sorrel for my greens, and a few other ingredients. Let's take a look at those ingredients. Okay, here are the ingredients we're using today. Collard leaves, about twice as much as I usually use, and two French sorrel plants. One large beet, ginger, about 60 grams of ginger, one clove or one whole uh, garlic plant, 180 grams of turmeric, and carrots. Now the first thing I'm going to do is show you the front loading feed tube, which is probably the best invention we've ever come up with at Whole Health Foundation and I'm going to install the near zero blowback cutter that has over 80 teeth cut into the cutter. Now I'll install the cutter and I do want to mention that the cutter does contribute to zero blowback but with this front loading feed tube you absolutely have 100 percent zero blowback. The only blowback you might have if you put ice cubes or something soft like cantaloupe in here, it might spit out about six inches, but never up to your ceiling. So the first thing we're going to do is plug in the thermometer, put in three or four ice cubes to cool down the cutter and the feed tube. And 16. So let's start with some collard greens. And I'm going to take two leaves at a time, fold them in half, fold them into a tube and feed in the stem end in first. A few more collard leaves, two at a time. More than that, it'll clog up the machine. Now I'm going to feed this in, not the stem end first, but the other end, see how that goes. Well, turns out either end is good. These collard leaves are so big that I'm going to feed them in one at a time. Now I notice my temperature is over 20 degrees centigrade. You can go as high as 35, but I like to keep my temperature below 20. So I'm going to put in three more ice cubes. Push the ice through very, very slowly. You want the cold to transfer to the feed tube and the cutter. And now we're down below 19 already. So again, we'll feed these collard leaves one at a time. Now as you can see, that near zero blowback cutter is doing such a good job, but I'm going to clean the grid. Take a look at it. Yep, it's starting to get clogged with fiber. And you always put the grid in the palm of your hand. Never hold it by the tip. In the palm of your hand and scrape the fiber off on both sides. Use your finger to clean the knife. Reassemble and continue. And now what I'm going to do is feed in some turmeric. More turmeric. And the ginger. the rest of the turmeric. And I'm going to follow that by French sorrel. Now for the French sorrel. We're up over 20 again, so three more ice cubes. I feed the ice through very slowly. French sorrel. And we're down to 16, down to 15. The ice cubes does a good job of cooling the feet. The, uh, now we're down below 13. Now I'm going to feed in my beets. I've already cut it into quarters. It's too big to go in by itself. 
rest of my French sorrel. And don't take too big a handful, less is more. So the temperature's above 20 again, we're at 24. So I'm going to do two things. First I'll feed in three ice cubes, then I'll clean the grid. Now the motor's working very hard. I can tell that this grid is very, very clogged. You have to pry it up with the knife. Yep, just as I suspected. So in the palm of the hand again, scrape off the fiber. Reassemble and continue. Here's the last of my uh, French sorrel, the last of my greens, and I notice my temperature is above 20 again, it's at 25. So what I'm going to do is put in three more ice cubes. Then I'm going to clean my grids. Now I've been using the number two grid for greens. Oh, I've been using the number J grid, J for juice. The J grid for my greens, I'm going to switch to my number two grid, which is better for carrots. So we'll clean this later. We'll switch to the number two grid for carrots. And you can put two or three carrots at once if you reverse them, small end to big end. Always feed in the large end in first. And when the carrots are small, two or three or four. Get four at a time this time. Rotate your bowl. Now here's the last of my carrots. One of the beautiful things about this front loading feed tube is I can see in here if there's any produce, not shred, but even if it isn't, I put a couple of fingerfuls of pulp in here to force anything through that might be hidden down here. So next we clean the grid, the grid holder, the feed tube, and then we'll mix the produce and make more juice. The next thing I'm going to do is clean my feed tube, and every juicer that's sold by Whole Health Foundation comes with one of these large brushes so you can clean your feed tube. I'm also going to clean around the escutcheon and in front and either use a damp rag or a spray nozzle like I have to clean the front. I always assemble the juicer with clean parts before I mix my produce and press the juice. So the cutter always goes on top with the hole facing down for good drainage. Never, and I mean never, leave the cutter on the juicer. So we'll put this back in with the, let's put it in with the J grid, put the number two grid up here, and then we'll mix the produce. The next step is to mix the carrots with the greens as thoroughly as possible. I spin my bowl in both directions to get a really, really good mix. I want to point one thing out, never make juice without having gloves on because you don't want all this under your fingernails and on staining your hands. Make sure your carrot pulp is mixed with your green pulp really thoroughly, very very important. You don't want any green pulp sticking to your cloth and when you have carrots in your mix the pulp does not stick to your cloth and you don't need the bamboo liner. 
Now the first thing I'll do with these cloths that just came out of the freezer is crack the ice a little bit so they'll come apart a little more easily. And we'll unfold them and continue making juice. Now I'm placing the cloths in the front end of the preparation tray with the cloths uh, dangling out a bit so it doesn't touch the countertop. I'm going to fill the pulp here, stack them here until they're ready to be pressed. And I'll put the press tray in now and get a collection container for the juice. So let's start by putting in three scoops. That's about a cup to a cup and a half. Not more than three scoops. Pull that over, flatten it, put it into a tight package just like they came when you bought them new. And then fold it in thirds. Set it aside. We're going to press two cloths full of pulp at one time. And one good tip is place the pulp here. Don't throw it. If you throw it, believe me, it's going to splash in your face. You'll regret you did it. So pull it into a tight package, flatten it as tight as you can. And I'm going to demonstrate my six cloth less work method. So two cloths into the press, in the center, centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back, back it off a little. The reason you back it off is you don't want this to go up too fast and we'll continue preparing cloths while that presses your last cloth, especially after the first scoop, advance that all the way. Three scoops. Nice tight package. And here goes with my six cloth less work method. This goes forward, that goes over. The spent cloths go on top. Two more cloths in the press. Centered left to right. Centered front to back. All the way back. Back it off a little. And then you do not throw away the pulp. Most people do. Don't do that. I'll show you why. Because later you're going to get 10% out of this pulp. You put two scoops on here. And later you're going to get over 10% more juice out of that spent pulp. And I'll demonstrate why. And that's because the Whole Health Foundation Premium Model Juicer has a solid plate that will never break. And you can leave it up all day if you wanted to. So when you're on your last cloth, to dance that all the way and put two scoops on here. This goes forward, that goes over. The spent cloths go on top. Make sure that's on the press plate properly. Two more cloths full of pulp in the press. Centered left to right, centered front to back, adjust if need be, all the way back, back and off. And we continue with two scoops on top of the old pulp. Now as I said, this goes over, this goes up, the spent cloths go on top. And because my bowl is full, I'm going to put it into bottles. So I'm going to shut this off, put my tray back a little so it doesn't drip on the countertop. And this is going to go into bottles. I'm filling these bottles from the backside so the camera gets a good view of what I'm doing. And notice I'm leaving about 10% for topping off with water because this is very, very rich juice, especially for a diabetic. So I'm going to add about 10% of water. I use either filtered or distilled water. You could use bottled water. Now before we make juice, we pull that tray forward so it's on the press plate properly. We'll put two more cloths full of pulp in the tray, centered, left to right, centered, front to back, all the way back, back it off, turn on the machine, and we'll continue. Now this patty is getting very, very thick, so what I'm going to do is put one large scoop, not two, because I don't want the uh, cloths full of pulp to be too thick, that way they won't go into the press properly. So pull it into a tight package, flatten it, set it aside, and continue. And when you're on your last cloth, especially after your first scoop, advance that all the way. And here's the last of my pulp. 
what I'm going to do now is put this in the sink and get a spatula to get the rest of this pulp out. And when I'm on the last cloth, that that's out all the way. Nice tight package, the tighter the better. That goes over. And what I'm going to do with this spent cloth, well first let's put two cloths in there. Almost too tight. Center, left to right. Center, front to back, make any adjustments you need to. On the way back, back it off a little bit. Now with this spent pulp, what I'm going to do is form it into a very tight package. And I'm going to demonstrate how this whole health foundation model with that bottom base plate that's solid, it'll never break, it has a lifetime warranty. I'm going to fold this into a tight package and I want to show you a different folding technique. So we'll make a tight ball. I'm going to fold this under like so, as tight as I can. And do that in both directions. And that's it all the way while I'm doing this. Turn it upside down, flatten it, set it aside, and continue repackaging this by forming it into a very, very tight package. Now my friends, as you can see, I've repackaged the spent pulp. This is pulp almost everyone would throw away. What I'm going to do now is press it, but I'm going to use a measuring beaker to show how much more juice we can get. So make sure the tray's on the press plate properly. Take this repackaged pulp, press it down a little bit, put two packets in the press at a time. You can see it's a tight fit. Make sure it's in the center, left to right centered front to back, adjust it if need be, all the way back, back it off a little bit. And as soon as you get juice full, advance that all the way. Keep your eye on the glass because it will overflow if you don't pay attention. I think I'm going to repackage it a second time. Well, there's almost six ounces. Ten ounces so far. And as I said, these packets are still pretty thick, so I'm going to repackage it one more time. Well, we have 15 ounces so far. That's more than one bottle. Well, as you can see, I've repackaged the spent pulp a second time. We got 16 ounces out of the first pressing. So let's pour that into the collection container. Oh, that made it almost overflowing. And let's see how much more juice we can get by pressing these. I'm going to put that right in the center, front to back, left to right, all the way back, and back it off a little bit until the juice starts flowing. Oh, we're getting a lot more juice. Two ounces so far. And remember, with the Whole Health Foundation model with this solid bottom plate, there's no fear of the plate breaking. As long as you have a steady flow, you can leave it up all the way. There we have three ounces. And I'm going to wait until the steady flow becomes droplets. Well, another 10 ounces, so 26 ounces so far. There's a total so far of 30 extra ounces. That's more than 10% more juice. Well, since this bowl is full, we're not going to pour this into the bowl, but we'll fill bottles again. Now, from this batch of juice, I've gotten 12 bottles of juice, and I'm going to top these off now with distilled water. Now, I'm filling all these bottles until they're just slightly overflowing, and they have a convex curve on the top, and when there's no air in the bottle at all, they can keep up to 10 days, but I try to drink my juice in five days or less. So we'll cap these off now, and then we'll do a taste test. Now your next to your last step is to clean the upper plate. I'm going to dampen this a little, and then use a paper towel, and you can see from the color on this napkin, I don't know if you can see it or not, but 
wasn't as clean as it could have been. So we're going to clean that. The side plate up and up top, all the way around. Most people don't do this. Uh, it's amazing some of the juicers that's come into my shop. And then what I'm going to do next is press all the water out of these cloths and then put them in the freezer. Now the reason we put them in the freezer is germs and contaminants will not grow in the freezer. And as soon as all the water is pressed out of the cloths, they'll go into a plastic bag in the freezer. As you can see my friends, we have five 10, 12 bottles of juice and a little more than two bottles came from pressing the pulp again that most people would have thrown away. And you get over 10% more because you're using a whole health foundation model that has that solid bottom plate. And by the way, any Norwalk juicer can be upgraded with the whole health foundation parts. So let's do a taste test. Well my friends, today's juice was collard greens and French sorrel for the greens. Ginger, garlic, turmeric, carrots of course, and one large beet. Let's see what it tastes like. Ah, delicious. A little bit of a bite, I think, coming from the collard greens, but virtually very, very tasty. Well, I hope you like what you've seen, my friends. And if you do, please tell a friend. If you'd like to call me, my phone number is 760 seven five three zero three two one my email address is developtrust at cox.net and my webpage is wholehealthfound.com i'll see you in the next video